Alrighty, hello everybody. Welcome back. This is part two of the Chevrolet Tahoe with the oil pan, timing chain, and oil pump replacement. Next up, we're going to put the crankshaft pulley back on. I've already taken the liberty of polishing off the uh, ceiling surface where it rides on the seal. Once the crank pulley is back on, I can throw that AC belt back together. It does not have a keyway. It's a press fit pulley. So we're gonna need a tool to help us. Now, rather than buying the tool, uh, long, long ago I made one. I simply just took a long piece of threaded rod, threaded rod, cut it down, installed some nuts onto it, and bound them together so I can rotate the assembly. And I've got a big washer on here to press against the crank pulley. Okay, it's threaded into the crank. Good. Now we're just gonna run this rod in and it will press the crank into its home. Here, let's do this with a socket. That wrench will take forever. If we uh, we take a look right here we can see this, uh, this pulley pressing over the crankshaft snout. So uh, she's going in. Let's speed this up a little bit. Ding! So I was reading comments yesterday and somebody asked me if these electric ratchets produce the same kind of torque as a, a pneumatic ratchet. Um, and the answer is, is kind of a yes and kind of a no. See these are not torque producing tools. These are designed so I don't have to sit with a wrench and go back and forth or hang out with a ratchet and go back and forth. So when you, the real purpose of these is to, is to manually use the leverage of the tool to break a fastener loose then use the power feature to spin the fastener off. And I, I get it, sometimes I cheat and I actually do use the torque of the tool, but the primary goal is not to deliver torque. You can see torque's kinda low. It just doesn't have the, the beans, so to speak. Torque test channel plug. But yeah, they don't have the beans to really deliver power. What this one does I think now I can use the uh, actual crank bolt to finish this off But uh, first I need to get my tool out, come here Good morning. Hello, good morning. Sorry, you don't have to edit that out. Nah, you're fine. All right, crank bolt. And that's threading nicely. All right, let's finish this off and we'll get that AC belt back on. And the reason I'm gonna do that AC belt next is there's a lot of space here and I don't wanna wait till later when there's less space. Okay, this is my arch nemesis, a stretch fit AC belt. They're not my favorite type of belt. I would prefer a tensioner. These used to come with a tensioner on them on the older designs. Unfortunately, it was so chintzy, it was extremely failure prone. So it appears that uh, GM has elected to eliminate it. Now there is a tool designed to help these belts ramp onto the, uh, just the use the hold on to it and rotate it method. Come on, flanges, don't let me down. I'm actually, I may have to put a tool on this. Yeah, it's, it's wanting to slip off. Not good. Let's try something else real quick. My right hand's hanging onto the belt. I'm trying to hold on to it enough where it can stretch and make its way onto the pulley. Oh, negative. Okay, I have a new idea. We're gonna do the coat hanger method. See, we need to stop the this belt from slipping off of this pulley. So we're just going to attach it.
like so. Let's cut off the excess. Get rid of that. You're making a liar out of me. Cut. All right, now I'd like to make this a little bit tighter. So we'll do that by making it shorter, and I'll do that with some needle nose pliers. Uh, help yourself, sir. I think it's in my top drawer of the blue box. They're all blue. There, that's tight as sure. Big top drawer, try that one. It might be. Oh, well, dang, I don't know where it is. I have not used it today. Hang on, let me get this belt on and I'll, uh... all right, you find it, that's fine. Yeah, you find it, see, see how it's coming around like that? There's a spoke right about here and it's gonna catch that spoke. Oh, do you have it? And I had it on the front seat of this Jeep waiting for them to decide to do it. Ah, see now we're getting tight right here. Here we go. gone farther than any previous attempt I accept this and there we go that little twang indicates that we are now attached all right let's lose our tool snap that's that all right, moving on, it's water pump time. We've got, that's shiny. We've got our new gaskets here. They're blue, so you know that they're good. Uh, these are Felpro metal gaskets. I prefer these, they're, they're very good gaskets. Uh, one common theme you may notice around here is I do not use like the rubber or crushable or especially cork gaskets if I can get away with it. Uh, for the reason being that they crush and then they leak after they crush and I don't like that. So let's unstrap our uh, pump here and we'll sling it back down kind of in position and what I'm going to do is run two of the bolts through the pump and then I will set the gasket up onto that's upside down what have I done let's flippy flop that you know what I'm just going to do all the bolts we'll run all three of them in and I'll do the same thing on the other side of the pump. Then we will carefully place it in position and thread it in. That's the uh, goal here. You guys can't see, I'm a terrible cameraman. Did it all wrong. All right, that's, uh, there's my three bolts again. And our gasket again. I have to mind this pump and not lean it forward. Otherwise the bolts will fall out of it and then we're gonna experience bolt gravity. And I'd like to avoid that today. There we go. So we're just gonna sling this guy up and forward. Now we can see this bolt, so I'm gonna start this one first. Taking care to not let the pump bottom out so I don't lose the gasket. Because if it falls out, I gotta take it apart and do it all again. And I don't want to. Alright, threaded, threaded, threaded. Okay, it's two on each side threaded. Now we're, we're secure. Let's, uh, let's grab this hose and get this out of the way. This is the upper radiator hose. We'll just sling that over here. There. All right, let's scooch down a little bit so we can see better.
connecting. Ding, pump is done. Water pump bolts are actually going to require 22 foot pounds. Ding. Uh, one other thing while we're here, I'm going to slap a new doo -doo 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 thermostat in this. Someone gonna get the phone? Nope. I think there's one more fastener. Maybe not. Oh, gravity. Yeah, that was a uh, 90 degree impact on gravity. Not good. Right, there's our old thermostat gasket stayed behind not cool let's, uh, let's just pluck this guy out and then we'll line the notch up on the new thermostat and we can uh, bolt this guy back in good no don't fall You're next. Let's plug that in. Clamp it on. Wiggly. There. I'm gonna rinse off some of that coolant that's spilled. I'll do that with blue water. It's blue, so you know it's good. Okay, next up. Now, let's see. Up and over. That was a fail, but I tried. Down, come here. There goes there. And apply the tension. Good to go. Belt's on. Great. Wrong. I failed. I missed a couple teeth down at the bottom. Let's do that again. I'll just give it the. I'll just reach down here, pluck that back on. There we go. All right, let's back up a little bit more. We'll put the intake plumbing back together, get the engine cover back on. But we are not done. We still have to go back down below and uh, put the oil pan back on. Yeah, you guys forgot about that, didn't you? Okay, we plug you in. Yeah, buddy. Clip it on right here. There's a little peg sticking up on the intake. There we go. The peg is pegged. And of course, the hose over here. There. Okay. Moving on back up. Yeah, I don't think he's going to close on his last day. Yeah, that's last day stuff. No, he's going to go. I didn't know he was leaving. Oh and no! Yeah, they, they told us. They told us yesterday. I knew like a week ago he was on his way out. Yeah. But they told us yesterday. All right, boys, we're we're back down below. We've got a new O-ring on this oil pickup tube, and we're gonna go ahead and fit this thing into position. We're gonna do the uh, O-ring side first. That's up front. Uh, you can't see. I can see. And uh, it is now in place. So we've got two nuts here and here, and then that one bolt up in the front that will secure the pickup tube. I might go without saying, but what we do not want to do is put the oil pan back in 
uh, without the pickup tube. Because then we will blow up this engine. And that would be bad. I got the front bolt going in right up here. Like I said, it's, it's hidden. You guys can't see what's going on. But no worries, this is gonna go quick. Pickup tube, click. There we go. Now, last time I did this, you guys said I didn't tighten these bolts, or one of them, because I cut that scene out. Uh, I'm not gonna do that this time. There we go. Now they're both in. Are you satisfied now? No. No? Why not? Oh, I bet I can satisfy you. Crickets, I hear nothing. Pete wants to be satisfied by me. Pete, would you like me to satisfy you? Get out of here. Uh, no, I'm not getting out of here, I was here first. All right, this is terrible. Okay, next on the hit list, we need to put some sealant between the rear cover and the engine block, and same on the front, between the front cover and the engine block. Doo -doo -doo. And that will prevent oil from wicking out where the seal is right here. There we go. There's a dab, another one on the other side. There's our dab, and then two more up in the front over yonder there. Oh, also, um, off camera, I cleaned out the inside of this pan. It is now sludge free, and the outside, and I replaced the gasket that goes right here on this uh, oil cooler tube cover. Uh, this vehicle's not equipped with an oil cooler, hence the presence of the cover. All right, oil pan, time for you to go to your home. Sneak this guy up in here. I've already got four bolts in the oil pan itself. Those are gonna hold it in position while I set the rest of the bolts up. There's one right there. Number two. There's one. All right, we're, we're secure-ish now. Let's back up some. There's a oil pan in your face. There are two super long ones that go in the back of the pan here. I wanna get those first. Those are difficult to align properly. There's one. Yeah, see how that one, that one doesn't want to thread. Let's tighten up some of these other bolts here. This is not aligned properly just yet. Let's back this guy out. Tighten this one. It's gonna draw the pan up. Clickage. All right, we're good there. Wonderful. Let's get one of our bell housing bolts in. That way we can draw the pan back against the bell housing for proper alignment. Click. Ah, the mosquito! It's on my ankle. Okay, front bolt's going in. There's one front bolt clickage. It's got its counterpart right next to it. We'll get that one too. One more front bolt here. And then we'll get the remaining ones on the passenger side. So three or four, I think. Cover click. Oh, gravy now. Alrighty, I would like to put the starter in next. And I've also got that little uh, plastic cover slash panel business thing going on. Let's fit that in. Sorry if you fellas can't see what I'm doing here. Come on, starter. What is what is this? I don't I don't like what you're doing here. Ow! Got my finger. Okay, starter's kind of in. Let's secure our little cover first. Oh, 
cover clickage. Okay, we've got two bolts for the starter. Let's get those in and bolt this guy down. Yeah, starter's in. Beautiful. Hang these lines next. Oh, I didn't mention it. I've already gone through and tightened down all the bolts on this side of the oil pan. Maybe I did mention it. If I didn't, now I did. And if I did, then I mentioned it twice. There we go. Solves that little bit of mental dilemma, judo or whatever. bracket secure okay so if you remember earlier we had to uh, lower the steering gear down in order to clear the oil pan area so now I'm going to uh, get the steering gear back up and bolted to the frame let's just put this wiring harness back up while we're here there we go it's kind of in the way there okay we're gonna do the big bolts first those will probably be the easiest to, uh, to set up they run all the way through the frame and then there's a threaded area on the steering gear bushing. I know you guys can't see a lot of that going on with this car. This one's going to take the weight and it'll give me a pivot point so I can get the other two in that uh, go on this side over here. Now from where my head is, which is over here and back, I can see the hole on the other side. So we'll run that through, the bolt through, and just gotta line up our brackets and whatnot. Thread it in, there we go, that one started. There's the one up top here. I'm not gonna torque those just yet. We've got one more bolt up top. Where is it? It's under me. that one's not quite lined up yet there now it is Get impacting now Moving on, our next task here is to get the cross member back into its home. That's a tight squeeze. This is going to call for some impact encouragement. In there. Two more for the other side, and we'll spin the nuts on and apply some quick ejection. Get everything torqued down. 18 mil. Loud noises. That's not gonna work. No space. go uh, we have to do one quick filter change and then we'll refill this pan filter we're done with you come out ah, can't get it it's apparently a difficult to grip type of design Doo -doo -doo. shut up phone oh man that thing's in there why why would you do this, last guy? 
okay? All right, well, no doubt many of you are aware of the uh, power of my resolve in a situation like this. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and cure this with a pry bar. Because pry bars fix everything, most of the time. If I can just get behind it a little bit, we'll, uh, we'll make it turn. There we go. Oh, it turned. <laughs> I do run the risk of poking a hole in this filter and spilling oil on my freshly cleaned uh, pan, but desperate times and whatnot. Yeah, this could be a YouTube first where someone removed an oil filter with a pry bar. Oh, there's that hole. That's fine though. This thing better come out or we're gonna escalate to uh, impact driver. And we're really in trouble. Well, I, I got it to budge, so let's try the actual correct tool again. Wow. Come on, you. More pry bar. This is displeasing me. There. Why? It doesn't have to be this way. See, that's my problem in life. I, I see that the world could be a much better place than it actually is. If we could just stop doing things like this. And this is brutal. And I know it's painful to watch. It's painful to actually do. to get the filter off that did to change oil pump. How about that? Bye, Dad. Was it yeah. fun? Oh yeah, cause yeah, wine I is remember getting to the house. Oh, I'm really good. Huh? Really good. Oh, Shiny. Hey, I didn't remember putting LED lights on my sister in law's room. Yeah. Because she moved into a new house. And after that dog, I was gonna Yes, you got you got that red wine got you man. Well, it got everybody. <laughs> I just need rookies. So we got three of them bottles, dog. Nice and shiny. Hey, All right, let's get out of here. Get some fluids back in this bad boy. Get her done. Time for pumping the oil. Six quarts of five winter 30. Uh, you gonna go or what? There we go. Now it's going. and some coolant. Okay, we're going to clear flood mode this to start it. Uh, clear flood mode is going to disable the ignition system and the fuel system so it can't actually start. Uh, and I'm gonna do that so we prime the, the filter and uh, the oil pump. So we're gonna hold the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor and starting the engine. See how she doesn't start? It just cranks and cranks and cranks. That release, foot off the accelerator, key off, key on, begin engine starting sequence now. Okay, we got oil pressure, that's good. Shut it down. Where are we at, right? Right about here in the middle. Okay. All right, so I got her on the ground again. Uh, filled up a little bit of coolant, uh, three and a half gallons to be precise. 
go ahead and restart it and then recheck it for leaks again. Powering on. Moving back up for finalized inspection. Alrighty, looking good down here. I see no leakage action. We have no coolant leaks, everybody's clean. I think we're good to go on this one. That rattle noise is gone because I had to adjust this little plastic uh, cover that was here. It was touching the, um, was touching the, the, the uh, what you call them, brain fart. Torque converter bolts, there we go, that's the one. It was touching the torque converter bolts, so I had to take it, take it loose and move it again. Uh, that being said, I think we are all good to go on this one. Uh, I need to let it come up to temp one more time and uh, just make sure the coolant's topped off. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this out right now to save us all a little bit of time. I know you guys' time is valuable. I, I value my time as well. Uh, so that being said, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching my videos. I, I hope you enjoyed this particular set of videos. As unnecessary as I felt the oil pump replacement was, the uh, customer usually gets what they want. And uh, I figured it would be uh, fun to watch that operation considering we don't do very many of those. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna stop my rambling get back on track uh, again as always thank you for watching and uh, most importantly uh, please do not forget to have yourselves a great day see you guys later ending transmission now